safety and monitoring the pipeline will be equipped with the, the latest and greatest advanced technology, including sensor and remote valves. Uh, we'll receive regular integrity testing. We're required to, you know, uh, monitor and, and view the pipe every two weeks. Uh, our company policy is every 10 days, so we try to meet and exceed or go above and beyond uh, any other. Uh, we'll have a full-time operations and maintenance staff um, on site. Uh, we require, you know, to have a, an employee within 30 minutes to be able to get to the block valves. Now, for, for this project, I think it's, what, 192 valves, Leon, that's placed right now, or is that number? It's, it's changing as we continue to engineer. Um, but those block valves are placed periodically uh, per the, the DOT. We're required to place those valves depending um, on class location, but th that's able to shut down the pipe in different areas. Um, the project footprint um, in the areas where we're doing a single pipeline, um, we're going to purchase a 50-foot wide permanent easement. In the areas where we're doing dual pipelines, we're going to purchase a 60-foot wide permanent easement. Um, so in, along with that, we're going to need workspace to be able to move the equipment, bring the pipe in, and, and execute the, the installation of the pipeline. Um, and especially in these ag areas with the drain tile <coughs> and the sensitivity to the topsoil, uh, for all of the <clears throat> agriculture and for the farmers, uh, we'll be looking to get an additional up to 150 foot of workspace. And the reason for that is, is to maintain and keep that topsoil safe because we've been hearing a lot of feedback from a lot of the local farmers. Do you have power of eminent domain on this? We, we do not until the FERC approves our project. Our company policy and our company stance is, is eminent domain is last resort. We're going to do everything in our power to get voluntary easements from all of the landowners, uh, you know, work with them on a fair contract that they're comfortable with um, as it pertains to the agriculture, which is, is a big factor in this particular area. Um, we've worked with the Ohio Department of Ag and the Department of Natural Resources, and we've put together an ag mitigation plan. And how we're going to present that to the farmers and to the landowners is we're going to get this approved by those departments and then we're going to have a signature uh, by an officer of our company, and then we're going to have a signature block on it for the landowners. And that's going to be a document that will be the standard that we're held to during construction of the project. It's going to address the drain tile. It's going to address the topsoil segregation. It's going to address the depth of cover. Uh, for example, in agriculture, we do a minimum of four feet of cover, and that's from the, the top of the pipe to the surface of the ground. Um, in non-ag areas, we'll do a minimum of three foot of cover. Um, anywhere where we cross, for example, a creek or a stream or a, a road from that ditch, from the bottom portion of the ditch, we do a minimum of five foot of cover. So is it a continuing payment or is it a one-time payment? It's a one-time payment. <coughs> um, we're looking to get a perpetual easement. And that's a question that's come up in a lot of our meetings is, is how are you going to do your compensation? So as, as a company, we've come to an agreement uh, for agricultural damages, we're going to pay three full years of damages.